Dang, man, where is that selfie stick? Oh, man, I'm just going to have to make do with it. All right, here we go. Hey, guys, my name is Tristan, and if you are new here, please like, subscribe, share, and comment, and hit that bell for all the latest content. Hey, Tristan, how you doing, brother? Hey, Edgar, what's going on, man? You looking for this? Uh, Yeah, why, why do you have my selfie stick? Man, let me tell you, bro, it's a lot bigger than I thought it was. Uh, oh, so, wait, what What, what did you... This. Ha, what do you, why do you have my selfie stick in, brother, in the first it's place? Brother, a tripod. I didn't oh. realize how big that was. It stands on its own. All right, guys, so we got Edgar back on the channel by popular demand. Uh, as you know, previously, him and I did one of the first side-by-side -side comparisons of the previous gen and the new gen trd pro tundra and again excuse me for my voice if i sound a little sexy more masculine today i am under the weather got a little bit of a upper respiratory infection but i think it makes well with the video so edgar welcome back man how you been hey, brother how you been good good good, good. thank you so much for taking Great. the time to be here on the channel of always so, a pleasure brother. guys always i want to go ahead and highlight uh of course edgar got some new modifications so we're going to talk about that here shortly now the other thing i want to bring up is the fact that the saying goes as, you know, if you're not first, you're last, right? I think if you remember me saying that before one of our first videos. Well, here's the thing. Sometimes it's not good to be first. Uh, believe it or not, this very truck right here is the first nationally documented AC failure. Uh, so it's not a title I'm proud of, but it did happen. So most of you know that my AC unit completely crapped out on me. I heard sort of this. I'm going to try to replicate this sound like... Oh, ouch. Yeah, something like that, right? Something along the lines of that. And um, what was cold air was now coming out like a blow dryer. And so, therefore, I took it to Toyota. Uh, and the engineers went there and said, don't touch it. We want to figure out what's going on. The truck has been about one year ownership now. And I'll dive into that a little bit more. And also, about roughly 2,500 miles. So, for the AC unit to fail was a little alarming. So, they had Toyota send their engineers over here to really be able to lay their hands on it first to figure out what's going on. And of course, the big difference between the new gen and the previous gen when it comes to the AC unit is that this is electric compressor. This is belt driven. So therefore, yes, the electric compressor works when it needs to work. But unfortunately, of course, as with anything electrical, there is always the side of, I guess you could say, failure. And that's exactly what happened there. So sometimes analog, old school V8. <laughs> I can see where you guys are come from when it comes to that. Now, when they also dissected my AC compressor unit, they did find uh, shards of metal within that. So, but the good news is, is that Tony and Toyota, Fred Haas, and the rest of the team did an amazing job getting Sorry. me back on the road. They had me a loaner vehicle, which was great. So again, man, it's Toyota, right? It's one of the that's most what, that's right. successful, if not the successful automotive company in the world. And I don't think that they're going to sacrifice that reputation by creating something subpar. Again, everything first i guess first run would be sort of uh inevitable yeah. right inevitable when it comes to and excuse this uh very nasty sounding exhaust air <laughs> right um <laughs> but you know the inevitable sort of issues that you'll come about but that's <laughs> learning through experience right that's learning through experience this is how toyota perfects these trucks that's now let's go ahead and dive into edgar's modifications thank you again to tristan for giving me the opportunity to come back and have another look at this beautiful truck uh, in comparison to my beautiful beast right here, naturally aspirated V8. Um, both trucks are gorgeous, but I, this, this truck right here has a special place in my heart because it's, you know, it's been amazing to me. It's been a great truck. Um, as you guys can see, I've done a few touches to it to kind of make it my own. Uh, I did the TRD Heritage uh, little emblem on the grill um, right here put the TRD on the license plate cover and I've also done the red tow hooks on my truck and Edgar these are great man um, oh, thank you they brother. were not red before were they no they were not they were actually black and that's something that I wanted to do because I think red the little red accents on the green just man it just makes it pop it looks, it looks it looks definitely looks factory man i love the touch to it 
And uh, of course, you know, I, I got a little red under there too, but it's not from a tow hook. It's from a sway bar. <laughs> but uh, man, the, the, obviously the, the ever obvious gap, right? Engineering gap that I have between yeah. the two generations is, well, that tow hook. Another thing that I upgraded to, I don't have those. You small, got bigger tires. Yes, sir. I don't have those small little uh, street tires that come stock on this truck. What was this, stock on that one? Do you remember? Uh, yeah, it was 260, 275, 65, 18. And then what are Michelin, these now? Michelin. These are 34 inch, uh, actually 285, 70, 18. As you guys can see here, um, it's a 34 inch tire, 11 and a half on the oh, wheel. Wow. And it's very aggressive. You can see the tread right here, the sidewall. I love it. It's a Nitto Exo Grappler. Um, and I just, I love it. It fits perfect. There's no rubbing issues. It's quiet. I, I thought it was going to be a little louder than it is. Mm -hmm. It's comfortable. Um, and it just looks aggressive. It brings, to me, it brings the truck together. Um, you know, the, <clears throat> well, the thing is, too, Edgar, is that uh, it definitely gives your truck a more dominating presence or stance to it. And again, it's funny, you know, how tall, tall are you, Edgar? 5'9". Five 5'9", nine. Five nine. okay. And so you see the, the big difference there when it comes to sort of the, the height of the side mirror is clearly, uh, and even on the first video that Edgar and I did together, the, the previous Gen Tundra obviously just had a little bit of a higher stance to it. Uh, and of course, this contributes to that. But man, I definitely love the look. You can tell based on the upgrade, Edgar, that your tire is significantly bigger. Yeah. And the fact that you don't have any rubbing issues. No rubbing, no nothing. Yeah, and aesthetically, it looks great. Man, I'm not even opposed to potentially upgrading mine to those or those to that, right? So yes, to give that also a presence. So definitely great touch, Edgar. Thank you. Thank you. I think it just goes together with the TRD Pro emblem right here, the stamped uh, logo right here on the bed. Mm -hmm. It just, and the TRD uh, center of the... Forge, BBS Forge wheels. Um, I'm thinking of maybe adding this hitch receiver uh, shackle, maybe doing a red one instead of black to kind of make it pop a little bit more towards the back. One little touch that I also added was vinyl here where it says Toyota. Oh, nice. Army so, green. Yeah, match the army green. I think, you know, little things like that just make it my own. Oh, Edgar, and, by the way, man, so, you know, one of the videos obviously I did was that I am uh, fortunately and grateful that to be sponsored by Paragon awesome. bed covers, right? So you see the Paragon bed cover there, but I actually just now realized you got a bed cover. Oh, yeah. What kind of bed cover is that, man? This is this is going to be the backflip. The backflip. Back backflip. So yes. isn't backflip the one that the Toyota typically uses as a yeah. factory? So mm -hmm. is this considered a factory? This one, yeah, this one, this one came uh, from factory, so. Can you do uh, me a solid, man? Can you maybe open your... Yeah. Truck bed for yeah. me. I mean, uh, flip it in. I want to see yeah. how it works. So all you and then do we can open mine. Just pull from here. And so just... what are your thoughts on it? Does water leak in it? No, it's perfect. It works great. So, and as you can imagine, it falls all the way up here. Okay. And you have these to uh, secure it right here. Okay. And um, it works awesome. I, I have no problems with it. I have no issues with it. Just... So, you know, for me, man, I was, uh, I'm always a, a big supporter when it comes to utilizing factory parts from Toyota. That's right. And the backflip was one that I initially was thinking about getting, but because historically of my experience with Paragon uh, on my F-150, I, I figured it'd be the appropriate, I guess, bed cover to utilize on mine. And I got to figure out what's going on here because this thing will not stay, mm. right? You see that? It just yeah. kind of flips out there, but... Um, overall, definitely been loving this bed cover. And guys, um, you know, if you look through my channel, you'll see the, the review that I've done on this bed cover. But overall, very effective. Uh, there is a little bit of water leakage there. So I, I definitely cannot say that it's water resistant. A little bit of water leakage there, but overall, it gets the job done. Um, one of the big things that I personally dislike as well, and I want to highlight to you guys. Awesome. Is that um oh you like that the little oh. button there? Yeah, I'm just <laughs> <I know. laughs> we, we we can we can draw a fake button here. No, but no the, the problem I think is that you know again I emphasized it before F one fifty, my F one fifty, the Ford, their bed extender is on another level compared to this. Mm -hmm. The problem with Toyota's bed extender here is that it occupies roughly twenty five percent, if not thirty percent of your space already. Okay. And so if I even want to put anything there, sometimes where 
I guess whatever's left behind this sort of, uh, I guess, bed extender is not enough. I have to put my tailgate down, fold this mm -hmm. over to really utilize the five and a half foot bed, which kind of sucks. Yeah. Um, but again, that's sort of one of the issues that I'm still trying to figure out based upon just uh, utilizing the space that comes with it. But overall, man, great looking bed covers. One, uh, can't go wrong with either one. One last mod that I want you guys to see that I did uh, and that I touched for my channel that I said I was going to do a little sample. Uh, and, you know, I, I know that a lot of you have asked if my exhaust is factory or if I change something because it sounds very aggressive. Now, Man, you, you I, kind of, uh, you kind of. Put me, in, put me in my place on that one. <laughs> I kid you not, it sounds like my, my testosterone level was in the dumps. Uh, so, so basically what I did was, as you guys can see, it's got the dual TRD exhaust that came from factory. Now, the only thing I did to this truck was to add the Flowmaster Super 10 instead of the TRD dual, uh, dual mufflers that came in. That's all I did. I replaced that. Um, a lot of people say that it does a lot of droning, that it's it's... You know, it's very, it's too aggressive, but to me, it's actually perfect. Don't get me wrong. The TRD exhaust by itself, it's wonderful. It's amazing. It sounds great. I just wanted more rumble. Tell you what, Bill, why don't you crank it up again? Um, and I'm going to give you a little sample right now for my viewers, your viewers, so you can hear what it sounds with stock pipes and with the Flowmaster Super 10 on it. I'm almost want to, I want to put the camera on my truck to imagine that that's what it should sound like. <laughs> Wow, wow, I just, nothing compares. So you know what I'm gonna do? I I'm gonna take the rec audio clip of that <laughs> and somehow program it into my truck so that when I step on it, it sounds like that. <laughs> As you guys can hear, it sounds very aggressive, but I, I love it. Uh, sounds great and it just puts a smile in my face every time I get to drive my baby. So also one of the other things that we get questioned a lot about is the the true MPG difference between the previous gen and the new gen. Now, there are a lot of comments from previous gen owners saying, you know what, the new gen is not much better when it comes to MPGs. Well, I'm going to make a bet with Edgar because I haven't ate and I'm hungry as heck. But what we're going to do is we're going to drive to my father's house, actually, because i got to run a quick errand here and come back to right where we are, roughly about a 15, 20 minute yeah. drive. There's a combination of highway and city driving there. And we're going to reset before we leave the parking lot. And what would happen is that when we leave and we come back to this point, now we know, we know that the new gen has better MPGs, yeah. but I'll make this bet interesting. If I can beat your MPGs on your truck by more than three miles per gallon, okay, you owe me lunch. All right. We're going right now. Okay. If I I'll lose, if I lose, I'll cover the tab and you get a dessert on on me okay. as well i like that uh, let's do it all right so just got here to my father's house and currently from a 15 minute drive to where we are now averaging about 16.8 miles per gallon so let's see how edgar's doing here but i feel pretty confident i got this one in the bag all right Edgar. so we're here man so i got 16.8 how are you doing well i was trying to reset my my uh average but for some reason i wasn't able to do it but started at six which sounds ridiculous because <laughs> i know that my truck does not get six miles a gallon uh it's going like at 8.7 right now okay which so. is uh like i said it's not accurate i don't really haven't driven the truck very far mm -hmm. this last couple of days so normally when i drive to work when it's about 14 miles one way 14 miles back i average around 13.4 is that mostly highway or city it's city city yeah. okay that's not bad so at all man just, so we'll take that into consideration so let's use that benchmark for you 14 to kind yeah. of keep it you know yeah. just a little bit more average yeah. so edgar by the way man so we just want to show you some real quick we've got to get a quick errand what's up dad what's up, what's up? what you doing man what you doing so guys by the way right so this is okay. where this is where i store the uh the s2000 and 
Now, here's the thing, man. Um, this is obviously a key for for now, Edgar. What do you think of the S2000, by the way, man? Wow, this is this is beautiful. Wow, it's awesome. I was uh, well. Here's the thing. Uh, you guys know I am waiting on the GR Corolla uh, Circuit Edition to come in. And the thing is, is that I hinted a while back in one of my previous videos, mm -hmm. Edgar, that I wanted a V8 supercharged manual vehicle. Wow. Well, check this vehicle out, this picture here. This is a 2022 uh, CT5V Blackwing with the carbon two package, manual transmission, six speed. And I almost got rid of this vehicle and the Prius. My lovely Prius, right? Uh, for that vehicle, but unfortunately, I got lowballed of all vehicles on the Prius. So, you know, man, here's the thing with Toyota, they hold their value very well, their resale yeah. value, right? Yes. So, if you are in negative equity from an offer from a dealership for a Toyota, you are getting screwed you know, and definitely shop around. But, yeah. you know, we'll see what it goes. Leave in the comments down below, guys. What do you think? Keep it and build it, right? Wide body boost, the whole nine, man. or trade it in. And get my family car, my this, dream car. This is a beauty, though, bro. It's I know, beauty. man. It's hard. Mixed feelings, right? But we'll see what we happens. officially arrived back at the restaurant. So roughly about a 30-minute drive back and forth. The drive was probably more city than highway uh, due to traffic and everything else. But the MPGs that I averaged from that trip back and forth to where we are, 16.1 miles per gallon. Again, not too bad. You know, there were claims that if the TRD Pro Tundra, or I guess not the TRD Pro in general, but more so the iForce Max hits above 2,000 miles, that there was improvement. Uh, to be honest with you, I think that the best I've gotten so far, uh, MPG-wise combined, roughly about 1920. I think highway, I'm seeing the 22 to 23 miles per gallon. But for the purpose of this video and this bet that Edgar and I have, 16.1. So let's see if I beat him. All right, Edgar, so how'd you do, man? All right, well, uh. I want to say pretty decent, 12.9 for the city. Okay. It's not too bad. Okay. So basically, if you round it up, it's almost 13 miles a gallon. Yeah, it's not great numbers, but huh. you know what? That's why it's a truck. A truck is okay. a truck. Okay. Well, man, you know, I, I think the bet was, was that I needed to beat you by more than three miles per gallon. What and believe it or not, I averaged out to about 16. Oh, wow. So we're kind of neutral. Okay. We're kind of neutral. So I'll tell you what, man, lunch is going to be on me. Lunch is on me. And uh, just, you know, of course, I guess you consider it's lunch is more like evening time, but just a, a my thank you and gratitude and appreciation for you taking oh, the time you. to be on the channel. Thank you. Tracy. But appreciate we need that. to figure out a different challenge. What about off-road? Okay. Let's, Let's do, do it. it.